Hi, welcome back for week four in Key Concepts in Technology. Today we're going to go over information and communication. Information and communication must be two of the hardest words to reconceptualize for knowledge building. Of course, we have major disciplines devoted to all dimensions of communications and information and many rival schools of thought and approaches, but we can't cover even a fraction of what university departments of communication do in this course. We're focused on a core set of concepts and questions, but go deeper and wider if this topic motivates you. Too much information. We call our era the information age and complain about information overload and how to find meaning and interpret big data. Now, as social beings, there are few moments in a day that don't involve communication, interaction with others in language and other symbolic media. Like the term technology, there are way too many general uses of these terms. So we need to set up some useful definitions for a bridge to the more scientific and technical meanings of these terms that underlie the design of all of our technologies. There's probably no more important concept in the technologies we are studying than information. And the whole framework for encoding symbol systems and technical mediation. The information science behind all that we do with digital media and networks comes from proven mathematical engineering concepts. The technical, mathematical, and systems models of information emerged with the electronic communication systems from the telegraph to the telephone and for broadcast signals for radio and television. The signal transmission model that emerged is based on binary math, the bit or binary digit as the minimal unit. And when combined with the logic of probability theory for encoding information, we have the irreducible starting point for everything in the digital world that we take for granted, from networks to software. Why was this development in information technology important, and why can't we just take it for granted? Here's what motivated everything going in and out of our black boxes. Without a way to model precisely the minimal decomposable and recomposable units of symbolic representations by means of electronic signal transmission, we wouldn't have software, we wouldn't have the internet and the web, we wouldn't have our cell phones, our wireless mobile devices, and all the digital streaming media that's now becoming taken for granted. So getting as conceptually clear as you can on the technical definitions of information and communication is really essential for two reasons. First, understanding how all contemporary communications and computational systems are built and designed, and why this way rather than another way. And for understanding the limitations of these technically important models when it comes to analyzing the meaning and value of what we exchange in all of our messages, our communications, and media systems. As socially symbolic beings, we always live in technically mediated symbol systems and use information to exchange meanings. The background readings for this week will take you through the fundamental principles of binary encoding in bit units with the math for reducing uncertainty and maximizing probability of successful encoding and decoding. We'll also learn the key concepts and the transition points where technical models of information and communication need to be completed with the knowledge base from other disciplines, especially cognitive science research on symbolic meaning and symbolic cognition, and well-established concepts from linguistics and semiotics for explaining where meaning comes from in technically mediated communication systems. The major critique of the engineering model of communication is that it leaves out meaning. It's all about signals. Well, let's think about this point. First, think about all the forms of mediated communication and symbolic representations we use every day. Text and email messages, TV and video, streaming music and movies. They all depend on the common engineering method for information encoding. Okay, that's clear. 
But where is the meaning? What we find is that all the information encoded and transmitted as digital data always already presupposes the social context of meaning and the backgrounds of assumed knowledge that motivate and frame any message, any communication, or media representation that we encode. Now, where, whether we think on the model of, say, electronic pulses and Morse code, or the use of modulating radio frequency spectrum, or digital bits and data packets on the internet, the meaning of our messages comes from the human symbolic systems that surround them and the social uses of technically mediated expression. Now let's look at some, of, uh, some examples that are all around us. How do we know what a text message means? Is the meaning a property of the electronic data units that are sent and received through the network? How do we know what a segment of video that we just played on YouTube means? Or what the first five seconds of a piece of music streamed on our device means? Is the meaning a property of the signal? No. We create the meaning symbolically on the fly when we perceive the signals. Now a lot follows from this. As we saw in our first starting point in redefining our technologies as symbolic and cognitive, we can't separate the technical from the social and the collectively cognitive. So why does the digital encoding method work so well for encoding the material component of our symbolic systems like language, images, and music? How are signals as pure data, as someone might call them, separable from meaning and context for the purpose of digital transmission and software representations? Why can't we see how we associate meaning and value in these abstract binary units? Well, here's the secret hiding in plain sight. And this is a segue to next week when we'll study symbol systems and symbolic cognition in greater detail. Engineers have to focus on accurate digital encoding and decoding of the signal structures because we reconstitute the patterns of meaningful symbols from the mediated signals. But no one would care about signals technology unless it were motivated by the need to encode and transmit patterns of human meaning and intention represented symbolically. So let's get back to the question of where does the meaning come from if it isn't in the units encoded. Well, it doesn't make sense to ask where the meaning is. Meaning isn't in a location. It's, it's not in anyone's head. It's not stored somewhere. Meaning is an event. It happens in the process of using symbols collectively in communities of meaning making. The meaning context, the semantic networks, and social functions of digitally encoded content are not present as properties of the data because they are everywhere systematically presupposed by information users. Shared meaning, context, networks of prior expressions necessarily precede encoding and are there in our meaning communities to be activated when we catch what's decoded. So again, what we can't see is the most powerful, all our social contexts and cognitive functions for meaning and symbolic communication are what motivate and frame the encoded data with human agency. We won't find the vast webs of meaning and social contexts and uses and functions as properties of digital data because the meanings and contexts are the conditions of possibility for there to be any encoded and transmitted information at all. So we've uncovered another important part of the big picture of our technologies. When we study how information and communications work in our current technologies, we're not studying properties of machines. We're studying extensions and implementations of core human capabilities in collective symbolic thought. Our ability to exploit the material dimensions of symbols in multiple techniques of encoding 
and the necessity of technical mediations of meanings and intentions in symbolic form. So, what does this give us? The technologies for encoding information and for communication systems are artifacts of human symbolic cognition. Well, much more follows, as we'll see in coming weeks.